Thank you very, very much. I love Thank it. you. That was incredibly interesting. Yes, it's really interesting. Oh, and then really nice news is uh, we have uh, FC, we, uh, Vasil Vasiliev, one of the developers, maintainers of Kling Road FC, which is, uh, I don't know the correct name, but it's idea of what, what they can An do. RFC, RFC, a request for comments, I think. Yes, yeah. To the Kling LVM group with the content set. Clang LVM should contain a small C++ rebel. And then a lot of work is shifted to the LVM group and hopefully the Clang gets better support because they can concentrate on the important stuff. And also upgrading the LVM base becomes much faster mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, at the moment it's planning to make it more stable as standard open project because on the one side, it's really interesting what you can do. On the other side, it's really often crash. <laughs> it crashes a lot, yes. yes. Uh, I've talked to Axel about this uh, a while back as well, because the, the root team really has too little resources to work enough on clean. Yeah. Like on, on GitHub, there's also some activity and we constantly like run out of time to actually process the pull requests, address mm -hmm. the issues and so forth. So it would be really amazing if they could kind of like like move the clean project more out of root and like bring them more under the umbrella of the LLVM corporation yeah. and also attract the larger audience. Yeah, I hope they can do it. Yeah, I hope it would happen because just a small outlook to GitHub. Uh, GitHub. Like uh, one of the problems, for example, is like the current cling, I think, still is based on LLVM 5, I think, yeah. which is quite old. I think LLVM is about to be released in the next weeks. 11 is the latest version. 11 is the latest? Yes, I think it is last, uh, some weeks before. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe. And they're currently like porting to LLVM 9, which is already a, an older version and it takes them a lot of time. So there's a lot of work involved to keep up to date with all the technologies Kling builds on. So it would be really valuable if that could be addressed by, by a community outside of the root team. So this Kling guys has a really nice uh, notebook and binder to simply uh, display different ideas what you can do with your notebook. So that's also nice. And if you go to the uh, expansion stuff of the group it becomes nicer and I already see some uh, videos one guy has tested UT and <laughs> Kling and it works and what, what? oh cute so cute yeah cute. Yeah, yeah cute in yeah it works cute, cute widgets yeah you can develop your application uh, your GUI in Kling and my favorite <laughs> I can my change the GUI on the fly <laughs> My favorite uh, stuff is open stack overflow, copy the code to cling and execute it. <laughs> that is nice. And sometimes if some discussion about memory and something else, some use the reflection to show what is going on. By the way, the company or the, the, the group that develops Xus also mm -hmm. develops a lot of other very nice stuff. Yeah. For example, vectorization library. Yes. Just like why I that is actually I better well, designed who, than we see. Who, do, who doesn't develop a vectorization library? <laughs> 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 you just <laughs> go at the last for example. <laughs> yeah, the extensor library. Extensor. Yeah. And yeah, that's a quite interesting repository. They're doing quite a lot of. So there is XSIMD. Oh, nice. Um, XSIMD? No, this is also. Uh, XSIMD was a. XSIMD yeah. Was a, I did it with repositories and different stuff. Oh no, no, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Don't do this. Yeah, this is the library I want to. So. So, they, oh, the binder. The binder, binder, binder. Hopefully, yeah. it starts in immediately. And this is also a nice feature of Jupyter Notebook. Binder starts a kernel for you and provides you a notebook via a web browser. If it's starting... Uh, uh, well, it's, well, it's like MATLAB, isn't it? You're waiting forever. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sorry. But then you can show you how you can uh, display videos in your web browser with C++. 
Uh, but there's 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 ex libraries for that as well. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> but I don't know if there's uh, any library where you can control your application with your Xbox controller. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> really important stuff. Okay, I think it's time for that. Since you have um, provided the singularity image, yeah, and Hemera supports singularity. Can it simply run yeah. it on Hemera? In Hemera, yeah. The best thing is you uh, allocate. Uh, <laughs> I, I already tested in Hemera, yeah. and you have simply to um, to allocate a node. Mm -hmm. I believe I have tested on the P100, but V100 also works. And then, it. yeah, load singularity and execute the command. Then, yeah, it works. Okay, so I can do machine learning in, in C++ now. Yeah, and do that. yeah the hardcore way. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally. <laughs> Are we getting a bit emotional here? <laughs> <laughs> Clicked and description for the button and success and button's fine. Yeah. Uh, we, ha we have another library for. Yeah, and we don't another GUI library. library. Another GUI library. <laughs> library. That's what we need. You, 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 know, you know, your project has, uh, has yeah. reached maturity when somebody implemented a GUI library. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Accordion? I think it's the Atom Turing test. Is this a machine oh. that's a graphic widget library? <laughs> oh, yeah. That is nice. Uh -huh. right. And then with you. That's what we needed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the big funny video. Does it have an Emacs in a. In there a is an extension for Emacs, and I use it for as front end. And I have to see if I use it in the X11 mode. It should be possible to. It's possible to view uh, pictures, maybe also videos. So here it's just called video. I'm not sure this is moral. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ah, yeah. Yeah. Different question. Since uh, you sh you showed how you can enable CUDA to run from from within from within Kling and from within Jupyter. Yeah. So CUDA is a GPU technology. Uh, what about rendering technologies like OpenGL? Like could you was... like just like open a display context, create a frame buffer, and start uh, rendering? I have to think. Was it already? Um, I believe I saw already. Demo. The problem with OpenGL is you need the output window. Mm -hmm. So if you use Kling with Audio Notebook, it works because Kling triggers your system to uh, uh, open your allocated window. display display context. Yeah. But uh -huh. for I'm not sure if I saw some ideas to because the server is a headless system probably, mm -hmm. so maybe yeah. you cannot open an, uh, an OpenGL context. Mm -hmm. Maybe I saw somewhere the idea to provide uh, some OpenGA window in the X widgets up or something similar that you can, con because um, your operation system needs the output value and then you can use uh, like Qt like or like uh, FGLX or I'm not sure what there are also. many OpenGL libraries. Yeah, there's a lot of. OpenGL libraries which communicate with your system to display your data. And you can also write one for OpenGL. And then maybe it send it via a video stream or something else. Mm -hmm. to you would need to screen them then from the server to, to your yes. client here. Okay. For example, Isaac to a similar approach. Mm -hmm. It creates a video stream and send it to the web browser. And I think okay. this would be the same approach. Maybe you can also do something with WebGL or something similar. I'm not sure. So this is mainly this company or this, this consortium that develops this. Is do they have um, do they have on a uh, something like a supporting board? So so you, you you always have these memberships like you can be a bronze member or silver member or gold member for for open source developments. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's, they have also a web page. Oh. And I forgot um, the singularity container is the secure way, but they also provide 
uh, everything we are conda packet so you can <laughs> it's much easier than, than snake i like it yeah but you can download the link itself or smooth cling and yeah last week there was a release of cling series seven and the package already updated so I didn't test it yet, yet, but theoretically it should also work on the system guy counter package. But in this case, you have the problem that you have to provide Q8. That's true. Yeah, this is a little bit difficult. <laughs> but actually, nobody would hinder you. And I think I asked Axel once over lunch, like, why don't they provide a clean package for like the standard like Debian based package managers where you can just install that? Uh, there's an issue open at the moment. Uh -huh. The problem are uh, the problem with a dev package are the references to Clang LVM because they need a modified version of the Clang LVM. I know they need to patch it. Yeah. And yeah, with the upstream stuff for Clang LVM, that becomes also much easier. Mm -hmm. It's also a problem to providing a single uh, a spec package at the moment. Mm -hmm. I saw some ideas, but then you have to use the original uh, Clang 5 and put some patches on it and uh, Okay, thank you very much. And any questions from the outside? Are there still oh. people from the outside? Is there? Oh. There's Ulrich at least, thank you. Ulrich. Wait a minute. Are they still alive? Um, if you have questions, you have to unmute your microphones. Uh, <laughs> He's been writing pages and pages <laughs> in the chat. Really? <laughs> 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 the chat is a bit. Where's the chat? More. I think. Oh. Come on. Ulrich, I think we can't hear you. I think Ulrich is in another meeting. Okay. Ah. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, there you go. So uh, one thing I was wondering about is when you can you speak a bit louder? You can. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's better. Wait. Let me let me let me check actually which microphone I am using. Yes. No, no, we so can hear you. Just, that's my headset. Actually. Okay. Ah, no, it's not my headset. It's it's <laughs> you have too many. Can mic. you hear me better now? Oh, yeah, yeah. much better. Come. Hello. Yes. yes. Perfect. Oh, I can't hear you anymore. Shit. <laughs> this is all recorded. You heard Please that. use proper language. Okay, uh, now you can hear me. Yes. Yes. I can hear you too. That's amazing. Uh, the Leaps technology has made incredible. Um, I, I was I was wondering about the the stuff with a Qt or Qt or however you want to call it. Uh, so. In, I'm going to say that the evil J word, which all of you are going to hate. So in, in Java world. Uh, we, always, we always had the, the issue with Qt uh, that if uh, if you were using it from from a different thread than like your your main painting thread, huh? then uh, this would kind of give you uh, quite serious pain. So uh, uh, my question is how how do how do you handle that? Which which thread is is Qt's painting thread? Oh, yeah, threading is. Oh, I forgot to say this. Yeah, threading is a little bit complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, your main thread is your input thread also. So, if oh, okay. So this might block actually. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is, uh, for example, you should not start uh, as um, a thread without catching, because otherwise mm -hmm. it's possible that your input is not going in the cling and you're waiting for every time. So uh, before you start the thread, you should uh, be sure that you get uh, the, you come back to the main thread. Otherwise, you have a really big problem. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure if it, how it works with Qt, but on the root website, there are some videos which is really a small presentation with Qt, but not with OpenGL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, but this yeah, would, this would be. I, I would be curious to see how this works with. Uh, like yeah, I forgot to say it. Be careful. Yeah. 
on, on, on the other hand, there's, there's probably also a limit to what you want to actually have in the web browser beyond prototyping. Yeah. Yeah. The best idea is to put your asynchronous code in a shared library, which is tested yeah. before and simply execute it. I mean, in the end, if you drive this too far, then your browser might at one end become Emacs. Nobody wants that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm to start my Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I installed the. Uh, yeah! What? This is Jupyter. Oh no, I have no server. So the IN extension is to running uh, uh, in your Emacs Jupyter notebooks. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a web browser. Wait a moment. Maybe some pictures? Hopefully. Okay. Oh, I need a picture. <laughs> Emix guys has no pictures. <laughs> yeah, this is this is here. Oh. Oh, I cause Emix to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're flying around, and yeah, this is the hidden version. <laughs> yeah, but I have the features of my Emix. And I can use it with my keyboard. Okay, I think we should finish because he makes is, <laughs> he makes is really a great operating system. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you. Yeah. I and you sorry for that. sorry for the Emacs dizzing. Uh, no, no, I agree with you. If you mean the core is not good because yeah, the complementation is bad because it's single core and sometimes it's lagging and yes and this is also not the best solution for writing scripts but on the other side it's really easy extendable and the documentation is beautiful so often i don't need the internet to ask my question because you have a help system inside the index and it's easier to use than than because it has just one mode and you can't not access the, you can't access the win mode. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy. Those mm -hmm. class, leave win. You are catched forever. <laughs> <laughs>